last time I asked you a question. And, uh, that question. How do you know you're a Christian? How do you know you're a Christian? Okay, number two was, how do you know you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Hmm. I was having that question. How do you know? Can you ask your neighbor, how do you know you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Remember the Bible says, if you don't have Holy Spirit, you are none of Him. So how do you know? Can you just ask your neighbor, how do you know you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Number three, the gift. Which gift do you have? And uh, what are you doing with it? It will take us to the issue of how many people have you won before God? How many souls? How many souls? Because Christians, they're just doing like this. The Bible says in the last days, people will go all over the world searching for the truth. Go all over. It's happening. Other comes here. Next month they are there. Another one come here. People are going everywhere to find a way how do you know you're a Christian? Are you sure you're a Christian? Ask your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you ask your neighbor that question again? Say, answer me. Tell your neighbor. Can you see, we join the church in a wrong way. We join the church in a wrong way. People who are in the occultic, they know how far it cost them to be there, but not Christians. People in the occultic, you know, it's as good as people who are bringing sangomas to their houses. They know how far it costs them. But Christians know. They can naked themselves and climb the roof. They can do everything that the sangoma can say. But Christians, we have started our Christianity in a wrong way. I don't think we have been taught thoroughly. We just join. It's as good as Jesus is passing, we join. And we begin to hear, we learn from there to there. We don't learn from where he come from. We are learning on the road. That's what is happening. Our Christianity is of the road. When were you saved? 19 what what? Your salvation doesn't start when Jesus rose from the day. Your salvation starts 1990, 1991. You, 2000, ah, you are small. It doesn't have revelation. Another one say, I'm, I started my Christianity in 1993. Another one, 91. The one of 2003, say, ah, you are small. You. You're small. No revelation. If we can have a revelation of what happened there when Jesus rose from the dead, you see how it cost to be a disciple. What happened when Jesus was tempted and when all the disciples ran away and he was left alone. Before Holy Spirit came, Everybody could run for his life. Even now here, you people here, many of you here, because you are not ready to die. If someone can enter here with AK-47, maybe covering themselves here, yeah, maybe they are 10, even five or three, they say, who's a Christian here? Some of you, you are going to say, I don't know how I came here. 
I don't even, because you don't know the cost. You are not ready to lose all for Christ, including your soul. So how do you know? If you are not ready, how do you know you are a Christian? Look at the, the disciples. When Peter and even his brother Andrew, when they say now we want to crucify you, they say, ah, yes, you can crucify us. But don't crucify us like our Lord. Put this cross like this. They were ready to die. Have you ever did a fasting where you are ready to die? Always when you do fasting, you even look at your figure. How far are you? Are you losing your calves? Are you losing your, your shape? Our Christianity is so much natural. Think about people where they say funnies. And now they were told that if you don't bow now, we put you there. But if you bow, very good. If you bow, very, very good. We we'll promote you. But if you don't bow, this is the funniest. And people say, no, even if God does not save us, let it be known that we don't worship your idol. We need to reach that level where we know our Christian level. Our Christianity today is a story. When poverty comes, we insult God. When sickness comes, where are you, God? Christians must be sick. Tell your neighbor, Christians must be sick. To prove that sickness that is nothing before God. You must be sick. But what is important is where you're going. It's not what you're facing now. If we carry on saying, oh, you're, oh, Jesus, why I'm facing this? Why I'm facing that? We are not different with the people of the world. Do we call ourselves Christians when we are still grumbling? What kind of God are we serving? Look at Paul when there was a shipwreck when people were losing the cargo. You know what is cargo? Something that has been transported that will bring income. It was a serious issue like containers, businesses, everything. They were losing. And this, the Bible says 14 days they could not see the light. And there was no one was eating. A man got revelation. The Paul, he stood up and said, yes, we are going to lose the whole cargo. But God said we will reach there. So, let's take nourishment. In the process of losing, you are eating. If we know our Christianity very well, in the process of pain, we are moving forward. But if not, when challenge comes, we will withdraw. We are looking, a simple thing, a delay. If we want to know Christians, is when they've got this, a spark of light. Just a spark, not fire. Because a Christian who's having fire, whatever Satan brings, it burns. But a Christian who's got just a spark of fire, just a child like that. No, Satan can inform that Christian. Everything comes to the doubt, complaints. Pastor can see you. Hey, you are called. Can you see that? Pastor is jealousing you. Ah, you are empty. If you have got fire, wherever you go, you burn. There's nobody who can block a Christian. I don't know if you're hearing me. I've expressed that. I didn't know, but I expressed that. When I started to pray, I'll be with my wife, who are still using taxis. The moment I enter taxi, you hear some mama complaining, if it's there. Just say, I don't want to lie. 
Because you just enter a place, you, you, you change the whole place without talking. A Christian must be like that. You enter a place, the place must change. Not the not the issue. Hey, Hosanna ku Jesus, u kona lapa, o kona lapa. Hey, ngena ni lapa, ngena puma kanja. You are quiet. The presence of God in you is not quiet. Do you know that? I will tell you this. A Christian, the more he becomes quiet, is the more God speaks. I will tell you again. A Christian, the more he becomes so much quiet, is the more God speaks. In the situation where Satan is, is talking against, when a Christian is quiet, God fight. Go fight. No response. There's no Christians that when it's challenged, you can respond. No, a Christian. Because there is too much fire. Too much fire. When it's quiet, God responds. How do you know you're a Christian? So ask you, how do you know you're a Christian? Because today, everybody's a Christian. You meet this one and say, I'm a Catholic. Eh? You're a Catholic, yes. Are you a Christian? Yes. I'm a, uh, I'm a Dutch Reformed. I'm a Christian. Yeah, you're a Christian. I'm a faith machine. Christian, yes. I'm Charis, yes. Yes. And you're what? Okay, okay. Assemblies Charis. Well, others now they are taking from the Dutch reform, I mean, Charis. In other words, oh, sheep. Okay. Dutch. Dutch sheep reformed here. Catholic. But the issue of the names doesn't matter. What is inside you matters. Can you ask your neighbor, what is it that is inside you? That you, where you will be able to say, he was unto me, is greater. You'll be able to say that, he was unto me is what? Greater than the what? The one unto the world. But it seems as if the one unto the world is challenging you. If you want to see that your Christianity is small. I'll give an example by my wife. My wife, she's very sensitive. My wife. Uh, if I sit with her outside, she'll be the one to tell me that there is mosquito here. Me, ah. Uh. <laughs> she'll tell me, because her skin is sensitive, she'll tell me, this mosquito, this I say, hey, says yes. And she can hear too much. She will say, I'm hearing someone outside. I say, I didn't hear anything. I have to go out. I say, yeah, yeah, you are right. There's a person. Now I know she's sensitive. There, there's a sensitivity of the flesh and the sensitivity of the spirit. The one of the spirit is called revelation. Amen. The one of the flesh, your senses are too attentive. So much attentive that you can just say, this, this air is not good. My wife can tell me that this air is not good. Later. Or she see it, she say, there's this bad smell here. Me, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Later, after I have taken too much of that smell, I'll because hey, he says, I told you. I'm sure you understand that. But this thing is also there in the spirit. It's called revelation. A Christian who doesn't have revelation is not sensitive. You know, when you sit down like this, when you've got revelation, God is already telling you. I'm telling you this, but God is telling you something. Amen. You see, I'm teaching you about this. But this teaching doesn't end. It continues to you. Continue. You've got revelation. 
to, to other people I'm speaking joke. I just jump here. When I jump, when I come down here to another one, <laughs> it's a joke. But to another one, say, he didn't just jump that man. So we are lacking that because we are not Christians. We are so much sensitive outside, but we are not having revelations. And that's why people will kill us one day. The day in the last day, you'll be surprised your pastor is number one in there to enter hell. He's telling you, hey, hey, come here, come here. This is our place. He said, I don't want to go there. But you've been following me. And you were defending me. The problem is you were not having revelation. So how do you know you're a Christian? You are still fornicating, lying, fighting, gossiping. Things that are done by the people who are not even Christians. On Sunday, you come and lift up your hands. Even some tears, you see them going down here. You think Holy Spirit has touched a person. Can't you know? She got a letter from a boyfriend. <laughs> she got just WhatsApp. I know I don't love you anymore. Just say, just, Holy Spirit is working. Holy Spirit is working. There's no, no Holy Spirit. She's worrying about the boyfriend. No revelation. Ask your neighbor, are you a Christian? Do you have revelation? Yes. Tell your neighbor if you have a revelation of your Christian life. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. So, what will happen now? I'm taking you back again to what I'm saying. What will happen if you say you're a Christian? And you are not. I mean, number one, check when you are pressed. That's number one. Check when you are under pressure. You hear me? Check when you are under pressure. You hear what I'm saying? Huh? When you are Christian. When you are under pressure, what is inside you must come out. I mean, uh, if you say he was unto you, is greater. We need to find that one who's inside you. Is when you are under pressure, when you are pressed, inside you will come out. Boom. Number one. Either you defend yourself or you leave it to God. Either you do what? You defend yourself or you do what? You leave it to God. If you are a Christian, you leave it to God. Because you have to be pressured like that. It might be a situation, it might be a trouble, opposition or persecution when you are pressured. Ask somebody that says, what kind of pressure are you experiencing? One lady told me something. She had pressure of two children. Long time ago, she came and said, Pastor, my wife was still studying by then. She was still studying in university by then. I was left alone. She came and said, Pastor, uh, hey, I've got a pressure. I've got two children, and uh, nobody take care of them. So I've decided to be a prostitute. 
because God is not even answering me. He was supposed to be looking at these keys. If God, he leave me, look at the keys, they are dying of honor. I ask you a question, I say, sister, did you tell God about these keys before they come? She said, what are you saying about? I said, before these kids came, did you agree with God that they must come? She said, ah, pastor, what are you saying? You know I'm not married. I said, so why are you saying? Why are you blaming God? Go to be a prostitute. She said, no, pastor, I cannot start from far. Even you when you're around here. If I can also start from you. From you. I say, no, you're in the wrong address. <laughs> Look here, some people who are under pressure can make other people to sin. Some, some people who have sinned is because they were under pressure and affect other people who are innocent to find themselves in their sin. Okay, we'll talk about it one day. Let's leave it.